Among the countless stars shimmering in the darkness of space, many host their own planetary systems. Some worlds are scorched by the relentless heat of their stars, while others are locked in perpetual twilight and ice. Yet hidden within this cosmic grandeur may lie planets whose conditions bear a striking resemblance to our own Earth. On these planets, vast oceans could stretch as far as the eye can see, clouds might glide across the sky, and flashes of lightning could illuminate distant horizons during thunderstorms. It's tempting to believe that life has found a way to flourish there, just as it once blossomed here on Earth, in its oceans, forests, deserts, and at the icy poles. And yet, life itself remains one of the most astonishing, complex, and mysterious phenomena in the universe. Despite thousands of years of study, we still lack answers to many questions. The biggest being, does biological life exist anywhere beyond Earth? And if it does, where should we look for it? And how would we recognize it? In pursuit of answers, humanity has undertaken extensive investigations of planets circling distant stars, exoplanets that could potentially resemble our own world. Astronomers have already confirmed the existence of thousands of these enigmatic objects, some orbit old, faint stars, while others circle young giants that emit overwhelming energy. Yet in evaluating each new world, scientists specifically look for signs of water, an essential suite of chemical elements, and moderate temperatures, the very conditions that make life possible as we know it on Earth. To gauge how Earth-like a particular exoplanet might be, researchers have developed a special measure known as the Earth Similarity Index, ESI. Let's explore what it is, how it's used, and how it relates to one of the most intriguing exoplanetary discoveries to date, Kepler 452b. The Earth's Similarity Index, ESI, is among the simplest and most common tools for a quick assessment of how closely an exoplanet's basic characteristics match those of Earth. At its core, the ESI involves two key parameters, the first being surface gravity. It's calculated from a planet's mass and radius. If the gravity is significantly higher or lower than Earth's, organisms similar to those on our planet might face serious challenges in terms of body structure and metabolism. The second factor is temperature, which is derived approximately from the planet's distance to its star and the star's brightness or luminosity. If the temperature is too low, water remains locked in ice. If it's too high, water can only exist in vapor form. Both extremes are unfavorable for Earth-like life. Combining these parameters yields a single score that reflects the degree of similarity to Earth. However, this metric has clear limitations. It does not account for other key characteristics, such as stellar activity and orbital nuances. Red dwarfs often unleash powerful flares that can strip away atmospheres and intensify radiation exposure, while massive stars, like Sirius or Vega, live too briefly for complex life to develop. Orange and yellow dwarfs, such as our Sun, are generally considered more promising hosts. If a planet orbits too close to its star, it can become tidally locked, leaving one side perpetually scorched while the other remains in darkness and cold. Conversely, if it lies too far away, it risks freezing beyond the habitable zone. Despite these drawbacks, the ESI is a convenient, quick filter because calculating it requires only basic information about a planet's mass, radius, and orbit. Earth naturally serves as the gold standard by which we judge conditions capable of supporting life. Kepler-452b was discovered by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, launched in 2009 to detect planets around other stars via the transit method. The principle is simple. When a planet crosses the face of its star, it blocks a small portion of the star's light, causing a slight dip in brightness. By measuring these dips, astronomers can estimate the planet's orbit in approximate size. In 2015, NASA scientists announced the discovery of a planet designated Kepler 452b. Why did it spark such excitement? The star Kepler 452 is very similar to our Sun in spectral class, and Kepler 452b orbits within the habitable zone far enough from the star that, if it has a suitable atmosphere, liquid water could exist on its surface. Additionally, its radius turned out to be only about one and a half times larger than Earth's. All of this led researchers to speak of potentially Earth-like conditions.
Kepler 452, the planet's host star, is located about 1,400 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. Its spectral type is G2, practically the same as our Sun. However, astronomers estimate that Kepler 452 is about 1.5 billion years older. This makes the system particularly interesting. If the exoplanet has remained in a habitable zone for so long, life there could have had more time to arise and evolve, assuming other conditions were favorable. Kepler 452's mass and luminosity are only slightly higher than the sun's, and its surface temperature is comparable to solar values. In terms of chemical makeup and evolutionary path, Kepler 452 follows a similar pattern, but is at a more advanced age. Scientists often refer to such stars as solar twins, pointing to their significance in the quest for life-bearing worlds. It's believed that Kepler 452b completes one orbit in around 385 Earth days, meaning a year there lasts about a month longer than ours. Calculations show its orbital radius is just a bit larger than Earth's, placing it slightly farther from its sun-like star than we are from ours. Thanks to Kepler 452's slightly greater brightness, the planet may still receive roughly Earth-like levels of energy, maintaining a similar energy balance. Of course, there are many unknowns. We lack precise data on heat distribution, axial tilt, and possible moons. Even so, the mere fact that this planet's year is close to 385 days, coupled with its location in the habitable zone, sparks the imagination. We can't help but picture what it would be like if we were there, how much longer the seasons might last, and how different their cycle might be. Kepler 452b's radius is about 1.6 times larger than Earth's. On one hand, this leaves open the possibility of a solid surface rather than a purely gaseous envelope. On the other, such a larger radius may indicate that the planet is closer to a mini-Neptune or a super-Earth with a thick atmosphere and strong gravity. Determining its mass is difficult, but models suggest it could be five or six times Earth's mass if it's mostly iron and rock. Its internal structure remains a mystery. It could possess a hot iron core surrounded by a silicate mantle and crust, or perhaps it contains extensive layers of ice and water if it formed farther from its star. Its substantial size increases the likelihood of a dense atmosphere. Yet we don't know if this atmosphere is breathable, toxic, scorching like Venus's, or something entirely different. As soon as scientists announced the discovery of Kepler 452b, media outlets splashed headlines about Earth's twin and New Earth 2.0. However, experts advise caution. While the orbit and star of Kepler 452b appear promising, countless factors ultimately decide whether a planet can be hospitable to life. A key question is the atmosphere. If a runaway greenhouse effect has developed, the planet may be superheated like Venus. Conversely, if the atmosphere is too thin, stellar radiation could overwhelm its surface, or the water could simply evaporate into space. A planet's magnetic field, crust composition, and tectonic processes are also critical but currently unknown. Even so, the fact that it lies in a habitable zone around a sun-like star gives hope for favorable conditions. Since the Kepler mission, other space observatories and ground-based telescopes have added Kepler 452b to their watch list. Instruments like the Hubble or ground-based Very Large Telescope, VLT systems, can at least refine what we know about its star and look for subtle gravitational effects. However, a full spectroscopic study of the exoplanet's atmosphere is still extremely difficult. Kepler 452b is simply too distant, and its star not bright enough for current technology to analyze in detail. Still, the future holds promise. Next generation telescopes, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, and planned giant Earth based observatories boasting mirrors over 30 meters in diameter with advanced chronographs, may eventually reach the precision needed to probe certain atmospheric traits of Kepler. 452b. Detecting water, oxygen, or methane in its spectral data would be an exciting hint of biological activity. This work is daunting, but technological breakthroughs over the past decade inspire optimism. If Kepler 452b has indeed sustained a stable climate for hundreds of millions or even billions of years, evolutionary processes akin to those on Earth might have had more time to unfold. Since its star is older than the Sun, this world could have had a longer window to develop, 
or conversely, to run out of resources. Hypotheses abound, but none can replace the certainty that direct observations might bring. Then again, life on this planet, if it exists, might be drastically different from our own biosphere. There is no guarantee of photosynthesizing plants or carbon-based chemistry. Life could have found an entirely different path. Nonetheless, such possibilities fuel advancements in astrobiology, inspiring improvements in our search techniques for habitable worlds, and guiding us to learn how common Earth-like conditions might be throughout the cosmos. The idea of sending an expedition to Kepler 452b is mesmerizing, but at 1,400 light years away, it lies beyond the reach of any technology we currently possess or might have in the near future. Even traveling close to the speed of light, the journey would take well over a thousand years. Science fiction, however, loves to explore concepts of generation ships or revolutionary travel methods, keeping the dream alive. For humanity, the very existence of such a nearly Earth-like planet at that distance highlights the vastness of the universe. If these worlds are real, then perhaps somewhere among them are beings who have passed their own prehistoric era, discovered science, and built telescopes to look for fellow intelligent life. This thought inspires us to push research further, never losing hope that we'll someday gather more direct evidence of life around the corner. Essentially, Kepler 452b is but one among thousands of exoplanets, yet it vividly illustrates a compelling idea. There are worlds out there that might be very much like ours. Each system, however, has its own story, and each planet its unique conditions. Observations of this distant super-Earth reveal how relatively small differences in radius and mass can profoundly alter a planet's fate. Perhaps it's home to temperate climates, or perhaps it's scorched by unbearable heat or beset by endless storms. Still, Kepler 452b's discovery bolsters our view that Earth is not a singular exception, but rather one of many celestial bodies capable of sustaining life. Direct data on its atmospheric composition, surface temperatures, or magnetic field remain a matter for the future. Yet even now, this planet expands our horizons, sets the stage for new missions, and drives scientists to search more intently for second Earths. One day we might find not just one, but dozens of potentially habitable planets, each with its own remarkable tale of how life can flourish among the stars. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to show your appreciation for my work and inspire me to create more exciting content for you.